Welcome to Friday. We've completed another week, just about, and we'll be moving into the weekend. One more time, I'm praying for our pastors to have wisdom and the direction of God as they prepare for the weekend ministry throughout your community, most of which, for many of you, will be done online in some form, in some format that will help us as church reach to the people we love and care for. Pray you go out of your way to connect to those opportunities. Make sure that you structure your family in a way to celebrate it as though you were still at church. Something happens when we go ahead and get dressed and when we go ahead and prepare ourselves and we show up like we're actually going to the meeting. Something shifts in the atmosphere that helps us get the most out of the opportunity. So I'm encouraging you, don't just go sit on the couch still in your pajamas. Go ahead and get ready for church and let God do something special for you this weekend. Well, that's enough of that. John chapter 6, verse 5 is where we are today as we continue to move through our devotional process. Here's what he said. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already knew what he had in mind and what he was going to do. Philip answered him, well, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's birth, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will that go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the 12 loaves, gave thanks, or the, took the loaves and gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all eat enough, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. There's so much we learned from this passage. One is that Jesus anticipated the need before it ever arrived. The scripture says he already had in mind what he was going to do. Jesus allowed a circumstance to develop that needed a miracle, like the death of Lazarus. He knew about it, but did not stop it from, keep it from happening. As a matter of fact, he spoke to the disciples about Lazarus and said, said he's, he's dead, but he waited till four days before he returned. He allowed it to reach a place where it was impossible for anyone to do anything about it. Some even said when he came to Lazarus' tomb, if he had been here, he would have raised him up. He'd have been healed. He wouldn't have died. Truth is, Jesus wanted them to see a side of him they did not know. They, he wanted them to see his resurrection power. And in this case, he even pointed out the need to Philip. He said, how are we going to feed all these people? They hadn't even thought about the need. Jesus had prepared and planned for there to be a need so he could show what a great God he was, that he already had an answer before they knew to think about it or even ask for it. You know, it's the same with us. Before we ever find ourselves in the middle of a need, before we are even aware of the need, Jesus already saw it was coming and has already prepared the answer. Knowing the need was coming, he had moved on a mother to pack a small lunch for her son. It's interesting that no one else in those thousands of people had packed a small lunch or brought it with them. No one else had looked that far ahead. Often when we find ourselves in a need, we'll say, why didn't someone see this coming? Why didn't they or we or someone prepare in a better way for this moment that we suddenly find ourselves in? Is it possible that Jesus didn't want us to prepare for the moment, that he wanted us to find ourselves in a place that only he could be the answer for and to put us in a circumstance that required his participation? <laughs> the answer was already in the crowd. Jesus already knew the little boy had brought what he needed, the seed that would become the miracle for everyone to participate in. Jesus saw it coming. And you know what else? The moment we're living through right now, Jesus saw this coming. The need is already answered. There's already a seed somewhere. Someone already has something that God can use to do something great to show us. He saw it coming and he's already prepared the answer. Now, Philip, Philip looked at the cost, which Jesus had asked him to. He thought in terms of how much and how much money and what can money do and what can we buy? Jesus had kind of prodded him in that direction to think of the money, which is what we so often do. Jesus even said about money one time that it's like the other God, that we cannot serve both God and money. And he put money in a place that he often pushes us to a place to say, can your money get you out of this? 
Do you have enough money to buy your way through this? Do you have enough income stream to do what you need to do and accomplish what is before you? He will often put us at a place where our money's not the answer and ask us, can you afford this? What would this cost? And we have to say to God, it costs more than I can afford. Jesus wants us there sometimes because from that position, we look to him and say, there must be something better than money and it's you, oh God. And, and, and your answer may not need money to, to, to complete it. Too often in our prayer, I think, we even pray for God to give us the money to meet the need. What if we just prayed to God that he would meet the need? Because he may have a better way. And if it's no money involved, then there's no taxes to be paid. It's actually better off if God finds another way to answer it. Well, Andrew, Andrew was, was there. He had the direct connection necessary. He was already connected to a boy. He was already formed a relationship. I don't know if they were playing football off on the side, obviously not football, that hadn't come around yet, or they were playing some games. If they were, if he was enjoying being with the kids, he was, he was connected to the next relationship. And it shows the importance of us connecting and having relationships with those around us, even the next generation, because Andrew's time with the kids paid off because he was with them, he knew what they had, what they brought to the party that nobody else brought, what that young man had with him that no one else had. It makes the next generation so important to the next revelation or the next work of God that's going to bring us a revelation of who God is. It's so likely and it's so normal for it to be something God's doing in the next generation. But if we don't have a relationship with them, we don't know what they bring to the table, we miss the miracle that God had planned. This was an incredible moment. God often uses the boy, he uses the next generation, the new wineskin, the new leader, but we must be connected to that because often that's where the miracle is going to come from or through whom it's going to come. And then the next thing I see in this passage is Jesus blessed the servers beyond the receivers. What I mean by that, well, his statement was, it's better to give than to receive. The, the power was in that because he gave them the responsibility of distributing the bread and the fish to the thousands of people. Twelve men distributing to thousands of people took a lot of time. It means that when they could have been eating and served themselves, they didn't. They postponed their own turn to eat. They pushed away their opportunity to meet their own hunger and take care of their own desire. And they met the desire and need of others. And while, when they got through, God said, now go pick up what's left over. Twelve baskets. Twelve. One for each of them. Not only did they have enough to have a meal, they had enough to feed their family. Not only did they have enough to have the meal, but that was the first doggy bag. That was the first basket full after the meal is over to take home. That's just the way it is. That's how God works. He may call you to serve before he asks you to, to sit down and dine. But remember, if you'll serve him, the meal he's going to serve you later is better than the one you could have received earlier. <laughs> Let's wrap it up with this thought. Jesus is the bread. Jesus is the bread. Later, he would break bread in the upper room and say, this is my body, which is broken for you. Before we could think or ask, he was already crucified. Before we knew the need was there, God had already planned the answer, just like he had with the boy in the crowd that day. Before the foundation of the earth was laid, it was already determined Jesus was crucified. He planned the meal for us, not only for that multitude, but for the multitudes today who will come to Jesus one by one and receive the bread from the Father who has packed the lunch, who has planted the seed, which is the seed of Abraham, Jesus. And if when we receive it, we will be quick to serve others first, not just receive all the benefits of being a Christian, that's, that's there, we get that, but be quick to share it and distribute it to others just as the disciples did. If you do that, when you get to your eternal place, receive your eternal reward, you'll have basketfuls left over. God bless you, and I pray you have a great weekend and a great encounter with your church and your God.